The Tibet Museum of the Central Tibetan Administration concluded its traveling exhibition tour in three European countries in the last month. The exhibition focused on showcase of Tibetan culture and advocated for Tibet. Let us hear more from the Tibet Museum Director Tenzi Topten on the museum's Europe tour and on the reception of the exhibition by the European audience. Welcome to our program, Topdela. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me on this show. Uh, so to, to start with, uh, how was the overall um, traveling exhibition trip and what uh, was the uh, focus of theme this time? And also, can you share the, what are the key moments that you have experienced? Okay, so uh, the overall uh, experience of a uh, three week long Central Europe uh, traveling exhibition, uh, personally to me, was uh, very encouraging. And uh, um, the focus uh, thing that we brought uh, or we carried to the uh, Central Europe uh, traveling exhibition this time was primarily divided into three broad categories. Uh, first being the, you know, our routine traveling exhibition, uh, the photographic panels. Uh, the, we took two themes, uh, those were uh, His Holiness the Dalai Lama's biography and the second one is the uh, Long Look Home Vote. Uh, these are the two themes that we uh, took and uh, this time we uh, took the additional you know um, the engaging uh, displays um, like we, we took the uh, numismatic heritage of tibet uh, because recently we concluded the uh, temporary exhibition on the numismatic heritage particularly the coins and currency uh, which signifies the uh, independent nature of tibet and along with that we took the tibetan flag and also the National Geographic magazine, which features the Tibetan flag as the, you know, uh, the sovereign country in 1934. Mm -hmm. And the third uh, category uh, is the digital aspect of the Tibet Museum, particularly the interactive uh, website, uh, for which we worked for a couple of years, um, trying to build up the interactive space of the, uh, the current museum in the uh, virtual tour uh, theme. And also along with that, we took all the uh, short videos of the, uh, you know, the existing museums. Uh, so we uh, particularly engaged the audience through this uh, maybe four to five minutes video. And then we uh, asked them, you know, any questions and queries that, that they have. So throughout the trip, uh, mm, I think we encountered uh, countless uh, experience of connection and empowering. Uh, particularly when we saw the, uh, you know, the curiosity uh, was lit up in the eyes of the visitors. Uh, it was truly gratifying to see, you know, all ages of the, um, the visitors engaging in our display. And uh, we saw a lot of uh, uh, Tibetan parents holding the hands of the kids and, you know, uh, narrating uh, or telling the, uh, the uh, or talking about the exhibition, the uh, photographic exhibition by themselves, you know, telling the fourth generation kids about how they have escaped from Tibet uh, and uh, what are the you know, lives in the uh, exile community. So those were very encouraging and uh, mm, if we recall a few of the moments uh, of this trip, I think the first three days were really encouraging because uh, 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 it was uh, purely uh, the new uh, prospect of the Tibetan support group that we met. Uh, we went to uh, the Sapiens uh, University in Italy and uh, uh, to other uh, schools, high schools in Italy. So uh, we touched base around uh, 500 uh, new prospective uh, youngsters, particularly of age 15 to 20 years or 25 years. And then the another moment was uh, when we were invited uh, as a you know, guest uh, in the Itali Italian uh, Senate in Rome. Um, it was really honored uh, to have the Tibet Museum representing Tibet uh, in front of the uh, Italian Senate. Uh, and uh, also uh, a few of the key moments in Zurich was when we show the, you know, um, the uh, history of Tibet and particularly the self-immolation and the uh, four observatory, uh, you know, the uh, round uh, that went to Tibet. Many of the elders were uh, filled with, you know, uh, teary eyes. So those were really encouraging and at the same time very emotional uh, to see these kind of, you know, um, uh, moments. And 
uh, overall it was really fulfilling and it is more inspiring to see these you know re response and it, it definitely uh, encourage us to do more uh, for the you know uh, dissemination of the uncensored version of Tibet history to the world. Mm. Uh, you've just mentioned you have covered uh, schools and high schools, universities in uh, starting from Italy, right? So uh, I'd like to know, uh, is there any specific reason as to uh, why uh, these three European countries starting from Italy, Switzerland and Germany were selected or um, were chosen for this specific European tour? And also, uh, who were the uh, target audience? Yeah, uh, so the Central Europe, um, one was, uh, of course, the geographical proximity. Uh, if you look at the Italy, Switzerland, Germany, particularly the Frankfurt part of Germany, you know, it is all uh, in one belt. And we got the invitation from the Italian uh, association uh, named the RF International. Uh, the uh, fund was supported by the uh, Buddhist Association. And uh, mm, then we had a, a discussion with the senior management uh, secretary and the minister. And uh, they advised us, you know, of course, you are going there uh, in the Italy for nine to ten days. Why don't you extend it further, you know, to make it uh, more... Uh, Mm, I should say um, more impactful. So then we asked the office of Tibet, uh, the Geneva, Kumo uh, Telechukila, and she was very generous to accept uh, our request. And then we uh, extended to uh, Switzerland and the fr uh, Frankfurt. And the second is, of course, uh, uh, the historical uh, interest and the cultural, you know, uh, relation between the Italy. Uh, and uh, Germany and as well as the uh, Zurich or the Switzerland. Uh, and the third one is of course the demographic because uh, uh, if we are there in Italy, of course we want to you know, uh, like extend our service to the uh, Switzerland, particularly Zurich, because there we have uh, one of the uh, you know, uh, most populated uh, the exile community. And particularly, I'm more interested in, you know, uh, speaking with the uh, young uh, fourth generation Tibetan. And to some extent, we thought like we have uh, uh, covered many of the, you know, uh, queries of them. So in terms of the target audience, uh, as I said, uh, we don't have a particular target audience when we uh, started this journey, you know. Uh, but uh, looking at the... Uh, the itinerary, uh, it was very encouraging because in Italy, uh, we got the chance to meet the new prospect uh, uh, Tibetan supporters. So um, in this uh, three week uh, uh, traveling exhibition, we have touch base around 700 to 800 different, you know, uh, target audience, uh, particularly the uh, young generation. And the another uh, target audience uh, was the uh, Tibetan supporters. Uh, these were the ones you know, who are now uh, maybe above 50 years of the age. But what was so common among them is uh, they all have you know, uh, got the blessing of His Holiness Dalai Lama or met His Holiness Dalai Lama in 90s, 2000. You know, and because of that, their uh, determination is very, very strong. And uh, I think I don't need to tell them you know, the, about the history, but rather it is just a reminder and it's just a, you know, uh, uh, meeting to uh, talk about the future uh, partnership. Uh, and the third uh, target audience is the Tibetan uh, living in these three areas. Yeah. Uh, talking about the schools in these uh, European countries, uh, you, have also, you have reached uh, most of the young people, right? The focus, uh, the target audience, as you have just now mentioned. So uh, can you recall any questions that uh, that interest the students in these high schools or universities about Tibetan history and culture? Ah, uh, uh, I think uh, there are many interesting questions that they have raised, uh, particularly uh, because we, uh, whenever we go to uh, high schools and universities, we make sure that our flag is, you know, uh, hung at a certain point. So they were very interested in the, uh, you know, very beautiful colored uh, Tibetan flag. And they ask about the uh, the significance of this, you know, uh, iconographic or the features that is in the flag. So that is uh, uh, very common across these three uh, schools and universities. And another thing is uh, uh, they were very interested in the reincarnation of His Holiness Dalai Lama. Uh, 
um, how has been his holiness Dalai Lama or any other reincarnation being you know uh, found and what is the future prospect of the reincarnation of his holiness Dalai Lama. So for that we already uh, carried with us the uh, animated version of the you know uh, the reincarnation of his holiness Dalai Lama. And the third uh, most common is uh, um, about the future prospect of Tibet. Uh, they know most of them uh, have understand uh, about you know the our middle way approach uh, and the non-violence or peaceful approach to the resolution of Tibetan cause. So they were very curious to know the you know the future aspect uh, or the future prospect of Tibet. How was the exhibition received by the audience and the local media? Uh, so wherever we go, we uh, make sure that we keep a, a feedback booklet because uh, it's uh, not you know uh, good to ask them what what was your feedback you know uh, directly. But uh, if you look at uh, uh, or skim the uh, book uh, booklet, uh, we found many encouraging words like you know very informative and peaceful culture and uh, in most of the Ita uh, Italian uh, the cities. Uh, I think His Holiness Dalai Lama's teacher is, uh, you know, uh, like way ahead than the uh, Tibet, because many of them know uh, His Holiness Dalai Lama very well. Uh, so many of them written His Holiness Dalai Lama, you know, compassion, love. So these are a few of the, you know, uh, words very common by the many, many of the feedback uh, uh, given. And if we talk about the local uh, coverage, um, of course, uh, uh, when we were in the Senate. It was live covered, and then uh, in the Turin, uh, the uh, radio radical they have also live covered our discussion, and uh, we went to um, the Tibet House uh, in um, the Italy that is in the Reggio uh, Mil Malaria, so they have made a print uh, you know coverage of uh, uh, our visit. And yes, in the Frankfurt also, uh, just before the uh, inauguration of our uh, exhibition, there was a local uh, news outlet. They came and they covered a three minutes bite uh, for the live coverage of what is uh, exactly going to happen. So I think, uh, and also, yeah, our uh, Tibet.net and uh, uh, other media house also covered it. So overall, I think uh, it was well covered across uh, all the media outlet. And also, uh, in what way do you think uh, the traveling exhibition of Tibet Museum enhances or uh, contribute to the Tibet advocacy work in Europe? Uh, as I have briefly mentioned, I think uh, um, number one is uh, awareness and education. Uh, through this traveling exhibition, uh, I think we have uh, spread awareness particularly to the um, you know uh, the new prospect i'm very uh, happy that you know we were able to touch base this new prospect so uh, they were also being educated to some extent you know so uh, so this that is uh, very encouraging and of course this will enhance or make the uh, contribution or reinforces the advocacy uh, you know the uh, the forces that we uh, try to spread across the world uh, and the second one is the uh, you know the cultural exchange uh, because uh, almost all of these three countries have a very close tie with Tibetan government in exile and this time we just uh, reinforce and enhance this uh, cultural exchange and if you look at the Italy in particular uh, the uh, Tibetan Buddhism is the third largest you know spread uh, religion in Italy so that itself talks a lot, you know. So because of that, um, there were a lot of uh, groups who were interested in, you know, our visit, and uh, many of them uh, talk us about the future association and future, uh, you know, prospect. So I think, uh, uh, and, and same in the uh, the Germany as well. And uh, uh, third and the most important thing is the, you know, uh, the alliances and the network that uh, we tend to build, because the Tibet Museum. Uh, the brand perspective, uh, brand, brand per se is uh, uh, 24 years old, but of course in terms of the uh, international network, uh, we are still very nascent in our approach and in our you know, uh, uh, future prospect. So uh, like traveling exhibition like this opened up a lot of avenues and we, uh, we were invited by the 
uh, Museum of Oriental uh, in the Turin. So they were very interested uh, in the partnership with us. And also we uh, met some of the you know, uh, private museum in uh, the Basel in Switzerland. Mm -hmm. So they were also interested in knowing the research and development that uh, we can offer to them. So likewise, uh, uh, in Germany as well, uh, we have the Germany support group, you know, Tibet uh, support group in Germany. So they were interested in, you know, future uh, traveling exhibition around the Germany. So uh, I think uh, the network and alliance uh, will be more productive if you go to the place and try to meet these people, you know, one to one and understand their, uh, and, you know, the requirement. So I think uh, um, overall, the, in terms of the advocacy, we have uh, uh, contributed uh, a little bit in that sense. Yeah. Thank you so much for taking out your time and talking to us. And it was always wonderful talking to you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching. And see you all in the next episode of In Conversation with Tibet TV.